Well, uh, now, uh, as we had gone through the uh, basic approach to a very standard economic machine that involves two standard equations, the market relationship and the uh, <coughs> distribution relationship of an economy producing output, very simple uh, setup. In that setup, at the end of the day, I brought you to the conclusion that uh, this simple standard world has to be <coughs> added new assumptions, new behavioral rules, so that I can close the model. In technical terms, number of unknown variables was in excess of number of equations. We needed more behavioral equations to close the model, to complete the model. And then we have the ability of different approaches. We could invoke a neoclassical set of hypotheses or neo keynesian or uh, Ricardian hypotheses or Marxian hypotheses. Real world or the real uh, uh, theoretical uh, contributions of the profession had involved a lot of combinations of these three main streams of thought. There are a dozen, dozens of, dozens of <coughs> hybrid models that uh, involved uh, some mixture of these uh, three uh, main bodies. Now today, I'm going to start with uh, the neoclassical world. And uh, we are going to first introduce the Bayesian blocks, the, uh, the main infrastructure of the neoclassical vision. So uh, we are going to talk about the basic tools of the <coughs> neoclassical world. Why are we doing this? Implicitly, our main objective is an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. Why are someone rich? Why are others poor? What explains the per capita income differences across nations. This is our main topic. And we are going to approach this question from the angle of neoclassical economics. Now, when it comes to the neoclassical approach, one major thing that you immediately have to uh, introduce is a neoclassical production function. And we say that denoted by yt, National income, in sum, is produced along a neoclassical production function, F, of capital stock, labor stock, and some index that shows the technology, technology institutions, governorship, social capital, what have you. Everything that makes capital and labor work, the institutional and technological index, the uh, advance that this economy has. <clears throat> now, since we are interested in growth, first of all, uh, <clears throat> that means we are trying to find out what happens next year and uh, this year. Uh, so I have to make behavioral assumptions about how these variables change over time. We are going to assume that uh, <clears throat> next period's capital stock is replenished by new investments. But in the meantime, capital stock depreciates. So next period, today's capital depreciates. I'm going to use delta for the depreciation rate. 
So if we do not do anything over time, minus delta k, minus delta k, minus delta k, uh, capital stock will uh, disappear. So I have to bring new investments into life, and that is the capital stock accumulation equation. And for simplicity, for getting uh, uh, rid of delta and investment and so on and so forth, I'm going to assume that by notation, this thing evolves over time at some rate b. b is the net rate of additional additions to the capital stock. It is a combination of how much investment is coming in, plus this investment ratio, minus uh, how fast is our capital is depreciating. The net term, I come up with a number, it is B. On the other hand, labor, labor grows, and I don't have much at this stage to explain how and why labor grows. I'm going to assume that N is the population growth rate. Every year, new additions to the labor stock, new babies and generations are coming uh, into the labor market at the rate N. N is exogenously given. I don't have neither the intention nor ability to explain at this point how N is changed. N is not a function of prices. It's people's behavior. Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa has a higher N. So does Chinese until recently. Uh, Europe has almost zero N. And that's given. And finally, AT, technology and institutions evolve over time at some mysterious rate X. X is the rate of increase of technology. New Einsteins are born. They come up with ideas. And X happens. <coughs> and most of the time, we do not have a good idea of why and how X happens, how technology advances. There are theories looking at the behavior of technology. There is the, uh, the flying geese model that explains the Korean growth, for example. It is, there, is a new, there is an invention over time. And then uh, after some time, it tapers out. For example, this is the chemicals industry or railroads. And uh, while this uh, kind of matures and its ability to innovate kind of uh, tapers down, there is a new Einstein, uh, Einstein II, born. Uh, he comes with a new innovation, new innovative idea. Then soon it tapers off. And if you follow these inventions, it is as if the geese are flying, that uh, every round there is a leader in the group. Then the leader gets tired, or some uh, young guy says, Chikil uh, Kenara, uh, he or she becomes the leader of the group. So this is called the flying geese model of technological innovation. It is not a theory or anything. It's actually an observation of what is happening out there. Then uh, there is, well, this is as smooth as it, it is. It's considered a smooth model. Then uh, in the development uh, uh, theory, again, looking at the empirical regular, uh, regularities, so on and so forth, there is the leapfrogging model. Everyone is quiet on the pond, and Einstein is born. Hop, a frog leaps, and you just jump another level of technology. Everything is quiet for a moment. Then from out there, some other frog jumps. Uh, so it is the end of a gestation period, and hop, uh, an uh, innovation. Uh, then uh, another quiet gestation period. Then uh, industry 4.0 happens, uh, or construction 4.0 happens in Turkey, or that, that sort of a thing. It is something that I cannot explain. I can only watch and tell. 
Ee, aranızda Arapça bilen var mı? Ee, Okey. Ee, peki. Arapçada şey nasıl pronans ediliyor? Şey. Bildiğiniz şey. In the, uh, in the ter, ta, turn of the first millennium, around Saladin's times, where Arabs were uh, uh, already uh, uh, <coughs> masters of the decimal uh, system that they have borrowed from the Babylonians, uh, they were use, using the term in Turkish, şey, whenever uh, they don't know the, the meaning. Yeah? It is an unknown was pronounced in Arabic. I cannot do it. It's like psi or something. Uh, and the Latins realized that this şey in Arabic is something like psi. So they borrowed from the Arabic tradition the şey, but since they cannot pronounce şey, something that I cannot pronounce either, uh, that was as close as possible to x. So that's why since those days, whenever we have an unknown, Something we do not know. Unknown variable is used based on Latin's uh, interpretation of the Arabic uh, decimal place, x. So that's why x is universal unknown. So it's not coincidence that I use x here. I don't know it. I don't know what technology, uh, how it is developed. There are theories that I'm going to introduce. Some of them <coughs> uh, make, uh, are kind of powerful. Some of them are completely uh, a piece of scrap, but we are going to study these. So, capital moves over time, net of depreciation plus new investments, all of it at the net rate of B, whatever it is. Labor grows exogenously at the uh, population growth rate, and technology at the exogenous unknown. And since it is exogenous and unknown, I don't have any uh, dareness, any courage to exp try to explain how technology moves over time. I am going to assume that technology is exogenous. It is not an economic variable. I am not going to explain it. If it happens, happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's an X thing. So based on these things, what happens? is growth can be written along a production function. Whatever the production function picks up, kt plus 1, lt plus 1, at plus 1, throw it on as next year's gross domestic product output versus this year's gross domestic product output, which is the end result of the same production function in today's variables. Now you cannot see perhaps over here clearly, but uh, if these variables are all linear in given constants, okay, if all these variables move over time in terms of linear relationships, with given constants b, n, and x. That means this ratio, that is the rate of growth of the economy, is independent of time. Whatever growth rate is, as narrated by, by these b's, n's, and uh, uh, x's, it is uh, just as it is. It is independent. I do not have any variable subscript t over here. Population growth rate is constant over time. x, I am just trying to see what's happening. b is constant over time. So it's an independent of time. And uh, perhaps uh, you do not appreciate this uh, for the moment. But uh, once we start illustrating this, this will become clearer. Uh, so let's illustrate how this uh, neoclassical world works by one of our most popular production functions. 
the uh, function that Mr. Cobb and then Mr. Douglas independently, uh, these miracles happen, uh, surprising, uh, Cobb working in his uh, office and then uh, Douglas somewhere else, and they come up with a production function that both claim to be his, and uh, out of respect for both characters, we call it the Cobb dash Douglas production function. The Cobb Douglas function is, especially for empirical setting, extremely useful, as you will uh, study in your homework day. Did, did everyone pick up the homework, which is due next Monday? Over here? OK. So, higher, half day pasat. Half day, evet. That's right. <laughs> right observation, yeah. I'm not going to get any comments. Uh, all right, I'm going to write the Cobb-Douglas function in this fashion, kt, lt, and at together as 1 minus alpha. They could be slightly different in form than you are used to, but the main idea here that uh, alpha is the share of capital in output. It's also the elasticity of, uh, of capital in a uh, output. AT and LT, their common share is 1 minus alpha. And uh, that's the share of technologically endowed labor in output. If this is so, then this function over time becomes something of this sort. KT to the power alpha, 1 plus B to the power alpha, AT, LT to the power 1 minus alpha times 1 plus x, <coughs> 1 plus n, all to the power 1 to the alpha. All divided by yt, which is kt. No, 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 no. Kt alpha and 1 minus plus b. So I, instead of Kt plus 1, I wrote this thing. Right? Kt plus 1 to the alpha. No, 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 no. Uh, Yt plus 1 is Kt plus, Kt plus 1. Sakin olun, bir dakika telaş etmeyin. Kt LT plus 1 plus 1, right? KT plus 1 to the alpha is KT alpha 1 plus B to alpha. And now I, I am writing YT, which is all T's. AT LT to the power 1 minus alpha. So I am writing everything in T units. And that's why I am mumbling that, look, this thing is independent of time. Because growth is narrated in terms of linear and fixed parameter values. So these KTs and the LTs cancel out. So I am left with 1 plus B to the power alpha and the term in the brackets to the power 1 minus alpha, independent of time. But now let's pursue this. Now, as, as the, any confusion, anything, any stress? Buyurun. No, no. Çok doğru. Evet. Uh, I am interested in this term, yt plus 1 over yt. GDP next year, GDP this year. This is my rate of growth of GDP. Exactly, exactly. Instead of kt plus 1, I wrote 
yerine koydum. What, uh, what it is. Clean. Now, uh, <coughs> now let's introduce some economics to this uh, algebraic mess. One of the basic notions of the neoclassical world is harmonious growth. And harmonious growth is narrated in terms of a long-run equilibrium where it is defined as all macroeconomic aggregates like output, capital, labor, technology, all grow at the same rate. That is as if capital stock, imagine machines, uh, <coughs> uh, buildings, highways, high roads, etc., are growing, the capital stock of the economy is expanding. Then uh, workers, right, uh, tiny little guys running uh, uh, everywhere, their number is, population is also expanding. We have output, imagine one giant corn is growing bigger and bigger. Uh, all of these grow at the same rate so that when you take different uh, the, uh, divisions, that is, Output per capital, output per labor, capital per labor, it seems they are constant, steady. We call this type of growth as long-run equilibrium growth. And one of the key concepts of the uh, neoclassical world is the idea of steady state. Steady state is where all economic aggregates happen to grow at the same rate. This is not an assumption. This is a definition. I define long-run equilibrium, long-run equilibrium growth as where all macroeconomic aggregates grow at the same rate. Therefore, their ratios stay constant. And I call this state of affairs as steady state. That's a definition. I'm not making a hypothesis uh, or anything. Just like demand and supply intersects, we call price equilibrium. This is where long-run equilibrium is defined by neoclassical economics. So at this steady state, remember, uh, now we are not in an arbitrary place. We are under the steady state, that is, we are under long-run equilibrium, if all these variables grow at the same rate, in particular, capital and output must be growing at the same rate. Therefore, under the steady state, rate of growth of GDP must be equal to what the growth rate of capital stock is. So for this, I am writing 1 plus B instead of yt plus 1 over yt, just like, uh, because I am now imposing that this economy has reached long-run equilibrium. Nothing fancy. Under long-run equilibrium, it is under the steady state, yt plus 1 over yt must be 1 plus b. And that is equal to, I have cleaned up uh, some of these animals out of the uh, zoo. So I am left with 1 plus b to the power alpha, and these brackets 1 plus x, 1 plus n <coughs> to the power 1 minus alpha. Move this gentleman to the other side. You are experts in these things, uh, since you have taken the university exam at a later date than I do. You know what, uh, how these operations are carried out. I am left with these uh, equations. You got rid of these powers. And finally, let's write this over here. This 1 plus b is equal to 1 plus x plus n plus x times n. And since this x rate of technology is uh, 0. Uh, 0, 2, 0, 3, whatever, and 
the labor growth rate is something uh, a small eight. This interaction term may be taken away. So 1 plus b, since I have done this, uh, slightly on average is 1 plus x plus n. That's how fast this economy is growing in the steady state. 1 plus technological growth rate at the rate she, plus the population growth rate at the rate n. That is the rate of growth of output. Are we done? These are the leftovers, 1 plus p and this term to the power of 1 minus alpha alpha. Uh, here, this side. Under steady state, this is true only for the steady state, right? That's the underlining term. Up until now, this is definitions. And now I am making an assumption. The assumption is that the rate of growth of GDP has reached the long-run equilibrium. Well, what happens in the long-run equilibrium? The neoclassical definition of long-run equilibrium is where all variables, K, L, <coughs> output, investment, savings, all economic variables in aggregate grow at the same rate. Therefore, their ratios, since they are growing at the same rate, their ratios stay constant. <coughs> I have L and A here. They are, going, they are playing these roles, L and A over here. And output must be growing at the same rate as capital under the steady state. That is, I have assumed to be at the rate B. But this B under equilibrium, according to uh, our finding, that is the steady state relationship. This B must be equal to x plus n in net terms. Will. Uh, why do you go to uh, 1 plus b instead of the y t plus 1 over y t instead of why wouldn't we write 1 plus n or 1 plus x? Since all of them are growing at uh, We could have done that, but then b will be just disappearing uh, from, uh, from the uh, analysis. See, I am imposing a definition relationship. I am uh, imposing a relationship where capital and output growth must be equal to exogenous growth of technology plus exogenous growth of population. The whole neoclassical world is about attaining this rate. And now uh, that's what I have asked you. Are we done yet? No, we, have, we are not done. Uh, now the whole idea of the neoclassical world is how do we go there? How do we attain this relationship? Shall we do that or uh, is this an interesting question? Uh, or uh, we may go out for a cup of coffee or something else. Uh, I mean, do you rather prefer staying here uh, or uh, anyway, I'm just kidding. Uh, so let's continue. We are trying, we are after the conditions that uh, create me a steady state growth. Then uh, I have to start in uh, my uh, behavioral, uh, uh, behavioral assumptions or behavioral equations. Why is this important? Because I am, as I underlined, 
neoclassical world is a world of harmony. It is everything uh, is nice and smooth and continuous. Uh, life is with perfect foresight or with rational expectations. There are no major disruptions. If there happens to be major disruptions, uh, like uh, uh, the invention of something, a technological shock, then the economy adjusts to it in the long run. That's the real business cycle theory. The 1930 Great Depression is the end result of the chemicals and the, the, uh, <coughs> the railroads, the biggest technological shocks of the late 19th century. And it took about 20, 30 years for the world to adapt to it. That's how uh, the real business cycle theorists explain the Great Depression of 1930s. Similarly, 2008 is happened because the world is trying to adapt to the world of financial inventions, the derivatives, the, uh, the Aisha Teize, uh, uh, meat, and uh, so on and so forth. So in this world, how we achieve this equilibrium is the essence of your profession. Let's see how, uh, uh, how uh, we can achieve that. What is our algebraic challenge in, a, in algebraic terms? If under steady state, this character is moving at the same rate as capital stock, that is, <coughs> the behavior of capital stock is our starting point. Now, KT plus 1 depreciates, and new investments are added. Where should you start? What is your next additional hypothesis in explaining the behavior of capital accumulation over time? Delta is depreciation. What do you know about investment? How does investment occur? By, by savings. When? Right, but... Uh, a y t, I'm sorry, i t is equal to s t. This is an identity relationship. Investments was equal to savings between Adam and Eve. It was investment and savings in Babylonians, in uh, uh, Arabic tribes using the decimal point. When Turks uh, were at the gate of Vienna, investment was equal to savings. When Einstein was born, investment equal to savings. When the nuclear bomb uh, uh, was uh, uh, thrown, investment equal to savings. When we colonize Mars and then Jupiter and go to the outer galaxies, well, uh, anyway, uh, where no man has gone before, uh, uh, investment will be equal to savings. So these are synonymous, identical terms. And savings is simply little s of output. For simplicity now, uh, I am simply assuming that uh, since everything is in linear terms, uh, I don't want to just uh, put uh, extra lemon to the salad here. Uh, I am going to assume that saving rate is a constant. Charo Hoja, Refet Hoja, uh, uh, Emin Hoja, all others will just come uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with their guns uh, to, uh, to change our minds. But this is for simplicity. Okay? If you want, we can uh, cook up very complex theories to explain S over time. But this is not uh, the place and the time uh, right now. So at the bottom of the day, investment as a ratio of output is simply saving rate. Look, I, I could have simply written this under this here, or instead of IT, I could have written S times YT and continue the story. But uh, this assumption is uh, a very important assumption. Right? Uh, 
is almost uh, at the level of a capital crime. It, it deserves a capital punishment, but uh, uh, it is a big assumption. Algebraically, it is harmless. We are defining investment in output, investment share of GDP, as little saving ratio. Do not just swallow this as uh, a little uh, uh, information. Just at the back of your mind, this is where the data will confront the neoclassical findings. But let's continue. So what I shall do, I am going to divide this character by yt plus 1 and multiply it. So on the left hand side, nothing will change. But I will continue uh, this exercise and divide both sides of this equation by yt. So immediately, you realize that for here, I have already made an assumption. So if you are really memorizing this model, kt plus 1, plus plus, plus d, yt, yt, that's uh, just step by step, you miss the whole entertainment. Here, I have already introduced a new variable into the system. Just like la last week, we have to add, we have to keep on adding behavioral rules to close this model, to, to understand what are we trying to understand. Why are we here today? What's our main objective uh, besides uh, uh, some uh, writing schema uh, uh, diagrams on the board? OK. Off. Yes. Just uh, 20 minutes earlier, how, do, how did we start the lecture? All right. OK. To understand the nature and the causes of <laughs> wealth of nations, that is, the differences in per capita income across nations. That's why we are here today. We are trying to understand what explains per capita income differences uh, across countries. And we are doing so from the neoclassical angle. And this is one of the major assumptions we need for this purpose, for the neoclassical uh, take on the causes of the per capita income differences across the globe. This is one, one important assumption, and this is the second important assumption, the F. This is a neoclassical production function, meaning it should satisfy what? It has to satisfy certain properties. What kind of a function do you want? Yes. Uh, uh, what do you want from it? Should, uh, should it have four legs, two legs, tail, concave? It should be concave or with twice differentiably. Con it should be continuous. It should be uh, concave or convex in isoquants, concave in shape. What about returns to scale? That is, if I increase, if I increase all variables by the same lambda, output must increase by the same lambda, meaning that it should be constant returns to scale. So uh, this production function explains the level of GDP, and <coughs> GDP grows over time at the same rate as capital, and capital depreciates, okay? New investments are added, how? At the rate S. So this is the second important hypothesis that you have to add to your model if you want to <coughs> explain per capita income differences from the neoclassical tradition. Şimdi bunlar çok safsata geliyor size ama uh, let me uh, say another big word. Hani we were talking about the midterm and stuff. So when I ask in the midterm, give two very important assumptions such that your model 
is indeed a neoclassical model, what are you going to say? A production function, constant return, scale, ta 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 ta, and investment and savings are identically the same, same from the days of Adam and Eve to the conquest of the outer galaxy. Every time. All agreed? All right. Now, uh, let's go back to business. <coughs> What is this part? 1 plus b, which in equilibrium 1 plus x plus ta 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 ta. But this is 1 plus b. What is this? What is the notation I have used for it? It's not x. No, it's not x. It's not shay. Something different. What is it? Capital? Higher. It's not x. It's not Shay. Ha Shay is Tukche, Mananda Sediosunus. Okay, but you know it, it's not unknown. Capital output ratio. What was the notation we have used? Yeah, notation. One of the 29 letters of the alphabet. V. Capital output ratio. V. Shimda Ha Diosunus. All right, so this is capital output ratio, which I told you last week that out of respect to our uh, ancestors and our uh, uh, leaders of the profession, whom they have used V for capital output ratio, not my choice, their choice, but uh, we are using this letter V for capital output ratio. Now another variable uh, added on the table. is equal to kt over yt v, excellent, times 1 minus delta plus it over yt s. Voila. Again, time index disappeared. This is a model which is beyond history. It is the history itself. It explains all historical moments in a human life, past and beyond, with a bunch of variables. And now, this is true for any time, but under steady state. 1 plus b is this relationship. Therefore, V times 1 plus x plus n must be equal to V times 1 minus delta plus s. Or uh, combination of this, V must be equal to s over x plus n plus delta. Now, the art of economic modeling. First, we are all mathematicians, or uh, uh, we do our arithmetic, right? Okay, uh, we just started from some relationship, ta ta ta, we impose some relationship, etc., and now we come to an end. Now, you are no longer a uh, cold-blooded, objective mathematician, but Life with, uh, with passion, we are going to do economics. What does this equation say? Well, capital output ratio must be equal to, under steady state, saving ratio, exogenously determined growth rate of technology, debt of population growth rate, and depreciation. Well, out of this, if we are trying to 
say something meaningful, first of all, uh, it won't be any uh, harm saying that uh, depreciation is uh, in the North Pole and in the equator, no sun versus a lot of sun. Depreciation is high. In the middle, it is low. It's not something I can do about this. So uh, narrating economics out of uh, depreciation doesn't make sense. After all, remember, we are trying to say something about per capita income differences across the world. And per capita income differences is not explained by depreciation differences. I mean, it will be silly. No one will, will just say, uh, did you uh, study economics four years at Bilkent to say that per capita income differences, that is, Ethiopia is poor, United States is rich because depreciation rate. Come on. So uh, I'm going to ignore this. In my story, in my storyline, dep depreciation rate differences will not take an important role. Ignore. <coughs> Since we are trying to explain per capita income differences, right? Why is United States rich? Why is Ethiopians poor? That is what we are trying to say. Looking at the data, I want to say that per capita income in the United States is high in, uh, against uh, Ethiopia is because saving rates, technology, population, depreciation, so on and so forth, and capital output ratio. But in this storyline, I came up with a relationship saying that if you're trying to understand this phenomena from the neoclassical way, all right, then this is our key relationship. We have obtained this relationship from our definitions of steady state, our behavioral rules of how capital moves over time, and I, we came this far. Now, I want you to make sense out of this equation, which says that uh, this relationship, for some reason, is showing a high income in United States and low income in Ethiopia. But uh, to make this economically meaningful, I am saying that in this equation, in my uh, convincing arguments, I am not going to use, I'm not going to refer to the depreciation rate. So I'm just simply leaving it aside. I am not canceling it. It will just, it is exogenous, it will remain as exogenous. Now X. <clears throat> X is the rate of technological growth. <clears throat> Whenever there is a key innovation somewhere, it just, especially at this time of the uh, day uh, in the 21st century, through social media, through internet, it spreads out very quickly. Adaptation of it is something else, but the idea that technological growth uh, is out there. So technology is something like a public good. It is common. <clears throat> I cannot say that United States is technologically advanced and it is rich. I have to explain why are they technologically advanced. You are going to say that because they are rich, but this is not an explanation. Technology is, as an economic good, is a freely available public good. <coughs> whatever the, our graduates, whatever the graduate students at MIT is working in their computer labs, we have it available over here. The same windows that whatever. The pan world tables, nine, it's available to you. 
there is not much of a technological hindrance, if not out of stupidity, but uh, that's something else. So I am going to ignore technological differences as well. 